Manchester United have snapped their five game winning streak and the United Twins need to speak about it. Blessings to everybody inside, including yourself, Cappy, and every one of the 22s watching. Shout out to you. Manchester United 2, Brentford 1, and it was literally a game of two hearts, or at least you could say that. United slowly rose in prominence during proceedings, and that left room for the Beast to sneak in one of their trademark early opportunities. Kevin Shada almost had a guilt edge chance as a cross from Vitaliano down the left hand side was misjudged by Johnny Evans and found the German. Sadly for them, he almost missed the ball in transit. Well, he did miss the ball in transit, giving Eric Ten Hag's side a, a massive let off. We looked our best during that first half in transition quickly being able to unleash Marcus Rashford or Alejandro Garnacho on the wings but when it came to finishing it, it was all wayward and those are criticisms that can regularly be recited when it comes to our wide players Alejandro Garnacho especially in that first period I, I would say Marcus was one of our best players during that whole game he was acting as more of a provider if anything looking to deliver crosses inside towards Rasmus Hoyland and whomever looked to travel in sync we ended the first half in typical fashion conceding from a set piece as Ethan Pinnock was completely unmarked at the front post what created such grievances in that moment from Eric Ten Hag who was booked and many of the players was the fact that Matthias De Ligt had to exit the pitch just before Brentford's corner was taken. Hmm. And that was due to an earlier clash with Kevin Sharder which resulted in a massive gash on the top of his dome. And that bled, oof, that bled profusely in, in moments, in patches, intermittently but they were close by. The baffling reality about the incident was he came off the pitch I think twice and the problem wasn't solved. On the second occasion, you have to think about wrapping that up with a bandage or something, but maybe the budget cuts hit our pitch side medical team as well. Shout out to Super Nick for that one, yeah? If you know, you know. In all seriousness though, it was a fitting punishment as we appeared to be mostly timid, lack that aggression required to grab a hold of the game at Old Trafford. And when you factor in our recent form, first game back from the international break you'd want to see a much better reaction than that yeah but it wasn't to be just yet at least now i don't know what was said at half time but the team came out looking more poised in terms of wanting to put pressure on brentford's back line much better. of course you're chasing the game so that can be a natural reaction not always when it comes to united however but an early goal from Garnacho settled the nerves all round Old Trafford and perhaps re-energised that home crowd. It re-energised me and you at home. On the goal, however, towards the right of their central channel, Rashford delivers a lovely cross and it was quite a clinical finish. First time on the volley from Alejandro Garnacho. Absolutely nothing Mark Flecken could have done about it either. And we continuously looked for that winner also. A complete switch in comparison to how our starting 11 kicked off tea time. And look, when we do have these moments where spots collide, you always question how long those stretches can be maintained and we did just enough to find Rasmus Hoyland's death chip in order to take the lead. Imagine the first, no, no, you have to deep it, you know. Imagine the, these are the first goals we've scored in the league in over a month. September 14th against Southampton. And the build up to this goal was exquisite, quick and devastating, Ericsson to Bruno, just a, a light flick that squeezes past an engaging Nathan Collins, finds our Danish number 9 as he concludes the move with sheer class. And I have to give credit to Rasmus, uh, in that second half he performed better, looked much sharper in moments and interestingly after the game he spoke about working with Ruud van Nistelrooy how it has been thus far, but also what he, he aimed to do in today's game. Being a bit nimbler and utilizing his agility to get the ball ahead of defenders, spin past them and spearhead attacking moves. Something that I felt was missing from his game during that debut campaign, despite there being signs of him showcasing such a skill set with the small sample size at Atalanta. 
I believe the last time we spoke about the women's team was after the Everton victory. So. And then, you know, after that, following that game, we beat Liverpool in the League Cup 2 0 in Group A, 3 0 against our FA Cup final opponents from last season. Spurs in the league after quite a difficult start to that game. A fan and two destroys perform near heroics to maintain that record of no goals conceded until this weekend at least. Drew 1 1 against Brighton. Nikita Paris returned to haunt us with a second half equaliser after Grace Clinton converted her third goal of the season. One thing I do want to bring up is the fact that even during some of our games thus far, there have been problems in terms of keeping possession, keeping control of games and teams really testing our defence in an array of ways. If we are to maintain our unbeaten record, those things need to be worked on and ironed out. A lot of pressure is already on the coaching staff to produce so it will be interesting to see how we progress as time moves forward and, and there were positives in that Brighton first half, the way we pressed. Uh, unfortunately that didn't continue in the second period so it was a disappointing result no doubt about it but you have to give credit to Brighton as well. They have been one of the better starters so far this campaign after five games, three wins, a draw and a loss now. 10 points already after finishing on 19 and 23 24. They've got tough games against Arsenal and Chelsea in the month of November, which will really test them while we have an Arsenal side after the international break, who's now former head coach Jonas Edeval resigned after their 2 1 loss to Chelsea. They won midweek under uh, the management of now interim Rene Slegers. And, and she will be in charge for today's fixture against West Ham. And by today, I mean Sunday, the upload date, not the recording date. So a lot of scouting mission will have to take place. Big game on the way for real. Shout out to Caps for that coverage, man. Big up yourself, bro. Look, one international break goes, and next one appears. Next up for Eric Ten Hag's side is an away trip to Turkey, not just for hair. We will be facing off against our former manager, Jose Mourinho on Fenerbahce. This is a must-win game after back-to-back -back draws and our opening to Europa League fixtures. Um, Mohamed Kudrusov's West Ham will await us at the London Stadium next Sunday. Yeah, next Sunday, right? Yeah, next Sunday. Yeah. They collapse this weekend against Spurs, leading to the Ghanaians' crash-out moment, sending off Red Kjaden. No Europe for the Hammers means they'll have enough time to think about what went wrong and we'll touch on it a little during our vibe check next week but things are looking ropey for old Lopetegi. Hammers on deck and not for the ones blowing bubbles. <laughs> Hit that like button if you've reached this part of the video. It's the least you can do to help grow us twins. Subscribe if you're new. Share to your friends and frenemies. And until the next time, we'll see you lot sooner.